This week on Dave Reviews Everything. A look inside the pharmaceutical industry. It has come to our attention that it is facing a significant crisis. How do we know? Well, let's just have a look-see at some of the few examples of the products released in 2017. I'll read you a list here. And I'm not making most of these up. Alicopa, Calquence, Emflaza, Giapreza, Idhifa, Mavibet, Mebsevi, Nerlinx, Prevemis, Eradicava, Silic, Vestronides Alpha Vigibic, Simproic, Taltz, Tremfia, Trulance, something called <coughs> to treat adults with chronic idiopathic constipation, Vosevi, Zadago, and Zedula. Something's going on. We think you'll agree that they seem to be straining. In fact, what they seem to be doing is throwing random syllables together in a desperate and not very effective attempt to give meaningful names to their products. And this just in. Recently, industry sources have announced that in fact there are only a handful of possible names left to choose from. Almost every combination of syllables has already been used and that these names will be auctioned off to the highest bidder with the proceeds going to help pay down the national debt. Here's what an expert had to say. We missed the signs and now the pool of possible options is dwindling rapidly. This could account for pharmaceutical products recently released under the names Justin Bieber, an anti-hallucinatory, Wet Fartsamid, a protein pump inhibitor, and Goddamn Dog, a mild sedative. Knowledgeable sources who asked that their identity not be released elaborated. I pay a licensing fee just to name my son Bob, not Robert. Just I would have had Bob. And that's not a typo. The capital O is part of the trademark. The list of the last names left has been released to the press, and they are as follows. Molesta, Fuctardamid, Slipdicarol, Ubinadope, or Dun Be Such a Dope, and Flizbrithmid. As of this printing, the bids are totaling in the billions of dollars as companies scramble to claim ownership of these final names. And of course, where there's big money involved, tales of underhanded practices are surfacing. It was rumored that the CEO of Shmatafakula Oham of Qatar had traded a herd of his prize-winning goats for inside information on Ubinidope, only to find that it had already been sold to Bob Industries of Indiana. In a side note, Bob is said to be launching their new campaign, Ubinidope for Life, next month. Shmatavakula Oham is the manufacturer of Oh My Fucking God. <laughs> the goats remain at large, but were reportedly seen working at a 7 Eleven near Indianapolis. Under consideration, once these final names have been sold, is the naming of pharmaceuticals using the Tropical Storm Protocol, already having been in use in Europe for some years now. I've been taking Althea for some months now, for a mild speech impediment. I stopped though, I. Didn't like some of the side effects. <laughs> Thinking about starting again soon, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll see you later. As for the national debt, we have a government spokesman standing by live to tell us more about it. Go ahead, Chuck. Well, that's right, Dave. Thank you, Dave. It sure won't hurt, I'll tell you that. What with all the high price bidding for the words and our continued commitment to uh, hand out tickets to drivers uh, who are caught driving while being complete idiots, we should be able to have that national debt paid down in four or five weeks, two months at the most. Probably even have a surplus. All right, thank you, Chuck. Uh, thank you, Dave. No, no, no thank, thank you, you Chuck. Dave. Thank you, Dave. No, thank, thank you, you, Chuck. Chuck! And that's all for this week. This week's episode was brought to you by Pussy Galore and Vigo Mortensen. Remember, folks, where he goes, Vigo.